What's up everyone? Welcome to the Durbin Compound. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Devin Durbin. So today we are going to talk about tuning your table saw. So we're not talking about intake and exhaust and chipping it to make it go fast. We're talking about making sure that your cuts are 100% right on the money every single time. Um, whether you have a brand new saw that you are getting out of the box to, and setting up, or you have a job site table saw like this that you just want to check periodically, I'm going to show you some tips and tricks on how to do it. I mean, that's what this channel is all about. I'm here to make you more self-sufficient. Let's get down to it. All right, guys, I brought you in here for a little uh, up close and personal. So a couple items that we want are some reference material. So. Um, if you're messing with a simple job site table saw like this, I don't really care about the absolute 100% uh, preciseness. So um, a simple square like this or a machinist square will work for uh, something like this. And eyeballing it is not going to be a deal breaker on a job site saw. If you're setting up a brand new cabinet saw, um, you might want to get yourself a dial indicator and really set it up because you are going to want that cabinet saw to be within, you know, a hundred thousandths, um, you know, or a uh, hundred, not a hundred thousandths, within a hundredths or thousandths of an inch um, to make it, uh, you know, as precise as it can be. But this job site table saw is really um, used for hardwoods and laminates and cutting, um, ripping boards and stuff like that. So I really don't care about the preciseness, but I'm showing you here. So first we're going to talk about um, the angle of the blade coming out of the actual table. So I'm going to move this. I moved you on camera just a little bit, but I want to get the best bird's eye view for this uh, procedure here. So we are going to look right down the blade here. I'm going to bring it up to its maximum height. So raise your blade. All right, now we're nice and close here. Now we're going to take our uh, our square here and we're going to set it against the blade. So I don't know if you can see that on camera or not, but it's not perfectly up and down. So uh, it is out a little bit at the bottom and it, wow, I have paint on my finger still. It, it is a little out from the bottom and uh, it touches the top of the blade before the bottom of the blade. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that uh, we have had our saw all the way up to the 90 degree mark here. Let me unlock it and reset it here and tighten it back down. And okay, now it seems to be perfect. I just literally had it uh, at the wrong spot um, it wasn't all the way locked down. So if you were moving this from site to site and you banked on that being 100% perfect, well, guess what? It wasn't. So, all right, our next measurement is going to be here with the relationship of the fence to the blade. You want them to be 100% parallel. Now, what I always do here is I take a metal uh, ruler just like this, like a machinist rule. Um, and the reason why I do this is because these are 100% static. Um, they are not a tape measure. There's a difference between every single tape measure on the market. Um, no matter how little of a difference, there is a difference with every tape measure. So what you can do here is set it up with a tooth and uh, you can measure the exact distance. And what I like to do is when I'm setting this up, I will look down at it and I will set it to an even number. So I will move my, my machinist rule over and I you're going to want to line it up on one of the teeth that is facing the, facing the fence. So on a, on a blade like this, every other tooth, one is facing left, one is facing the right. So one sticks out on the left, the next one sticks out on the right, the next one sticks out on the left, the next one sticks out on the right. So we're looking at one that sticks out this way towards the fence, and I have it set on right on four centimeters. So we'll go ahead and lock our fence down here, okay? 
Now we want to verify that it's still right on four centimeters. Now you can actually slide it in between the blade. Um, and let me see if I can zoom you in a little tighter here and get you an up close and personal here. So I have it set here. I actually put it underneath the blade. The blade can come down on it and I'm right at four centimeters. Same thing goes back here at the back end of the blade. So since I have a riving knife, it's a little bit more difficult. I have to zoom you back out. But since I have a riving knife, it is a little bit more difficult. You can always take out the riving knife to do this. But now we are looking at the same side of the blade and it looks to be good enough for government work is what I'll call it. It's pretty much dead on the money. Um, right where I want it to be. So if you had a dial indicator, you could set your dial indicator up. Um, obviously your fence would be further away from your blade, but you could set up your dial indicator and then you could reference a point here and reference a point here and you can figure out that boom, I've got a, a difference or I'm right on the money and I have no difference. So that's another one that you can do. Now, and I know a lot of guys, um, if you're setting up a cabinet saw, you need to worry about this relationship, your actual blade to the groove in your saw. So this is where you would wanna set your machinist rule and bring your blade or bring your uh, ruler out to your blade and you could actually uh, tighten it down, tighten it down nice and tight and check it in relation to the actual groove in your table saw. Now, this one's pretty darn good for a job site table saw. Um, if you, if you were setting up a big cabinet saw and you wanted it to be precise, obviously a dial indicator is best here, but this one's right on the money. If you were uh, needing to adjust that and your blade was in and out like this, there are screws underneath the table, which allow the motor and the arbor to swivel each side, but this one is darn good. So check reference to the actual table, check reference to the fence, and check reference up and down. So if you needed to adjust that on your saw, adjust a stop, there's usually always a, a stop on the front of your saw or on the actual um, body of the saw here. So I'm gonna change the camera a little bit here. All right, while we are right here, this is a good time to ch also check this indicator for your ruler on the actual fence. So what I'm gonna do is bring the fence in here to about uh, two inches here. We'll bring our blade back. Remember the tooth facing the fence um, is gonna be our further, furthest most fence cut. I have it set at two inches and we wanna make sure that this is on two inches. If I needed to move it, I just loosen these Phillips head screws and slide my indicator to match. So that's how you check this reference. Now, something I hadn't mentioned yet in the video is setting up your miter gauge. So if you did wanna set up your miter gauge here or your, your, your miter uh, push you know, gauge, uh, you can always set this up with a square here and make sure it's perpendicular to the blade. Um, this is a fairly cheap model. I mean, this thing is literally just a thumb screw and then this thing just haphazardly uh, moves around. So I, I'd never use this. So if you had a really nice miter gauge, you could definitely tune one in and make sure that it was uh, you know, perpendicular to the blade at 90 degrees or whatever you wanted to set it at. You know, you, you can check that with a protractor, all that fancy stuff. So I feel like I would be uh, doing you an injustice if I didn't show you that you could also check 45 here and make sure that your other stop is 100% correct. So we slide it over to the 45 stop and then you can put your gauge or your uh, straight edge right in here. Why did I say straight edge? I meant your... Uh, your framing square here. You can put it up underneath the blade and that blade angle will match all the way around. So that's how to check 45. So too easy. All right, so let's talk about the uh, referencing it exactly to zero. So uh, there's always usually a set screw on your indicators 
And this indicator is pretty darn good to me. I mean, it was dead on zero. If it needed moved over a little bit, we can move it over. Um, if you were to tip up your saw here, if you're needing to make a legitimate adjustment on your stops, um, here on this saw, it has a uh, cam washer where you literally just adjust it in and out. This piece slides back and forth. So this is your cam adjustment for 45. This is your cam adjustment for 90 degrees or straight up and down. So if I sw uh, swung this all over to my 45, we could also check it with the uh, square that we were using on the table and we could adjust this accordingly. Mine was right on the money, but if yours needed adjusted, you could go one way or the other. It would allow the saw, the blade to tip over more or come back. And that's a good, um, uh, that's a good stop there. So uh, some of them have bolt stops where you actually thread in a bolt. So you might see that. Um, on this particular model, these two screws down here allow the entire arbor and uh, and motor to swivel from left to right. So uh, there are plenty of options when it comes to adjustment. These two slotted screws will allow this the whole saw to to uh, basically pivot one way or the other. So this is how to set up a genuine uh, little you know job site saw and it doesn't necessarily have to be perfect in this instance. So I don't have a cabinet saw to show you guys, but it is literally the same concept. Take your time, use the exact same uh, reference material. If you're using a square, uh, use it, the, you know, set it up, use the exact same thing for all of your measurements, keep it consistent, and you'll have a uh, great end result. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. A nice, quick, simple way to check your table saw. Uh, there's really not a lot to it. If you have any questions or concerns, put them in the comments below. I'm getting eaten up by mosquitoes out here in the garage, so I'm about to call it a night. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whatever you guys are into, and we'll see you guys in the next video.